class, I am just going to deal with the relative velocity. Dear students, in the previous class, even we discussed regarding some concepts which comes with the, the graphical representation as well as the derivation of kinematic equations of motion just by using velocity type graph. Now, I am just moving towards the next concept that is said to be relative velocity. What is this relative velocity? Dear students, when we come towards a relative velocity concept, the word relative itself suggests that we are going to compare the velocity of one object with respect to the velocity of another object. You can observe that on the right hand touch, suppose the two planes are moving. Suppose one plane is moving in a forward direction and another plane is moving in an opposite direction. By the time we can compare the velocity of first prime with respect to the velocity of the second prime. Similarly, assume that the two primes are moving in the same path. By the time also you can compare the velocity of the first prime with respect to the velocity of the second prime. Likewise, there are so many examples, so many natural examples that you can observe in the daily life. Even you can observe that suppose if you are sitting in a bus and if you are travelling, by the time if one, uh, one of the person who was travelling in a bike, he was just going outside to your bus, so by the time you can observe that, you can observe that there is a comparison of velocity between you and which you, are, which you are sitting in a bus with that of the person who was riding a bike. So we can compare the velocity of one object with the other object. My dear students, the velocity of one object with respect to the another object is said to be the relative velocity. The definition for relative velocity is the velocity of the velocity of one object with respect to the another object is called the relative velocity is called the relative velocity. Repeating again, the velocity of one object with respect to the velocity of another object is taken as the relative velocity. Is taken as the relative velocity. Then how to write the relative velocity? How to define the relative velocity? Yes. So you know that actually the relative velocity can be done as velocity can be given as displacement by time taken. Displacement by time taken. Then how to write the relative velocity? My dear students, it is very simple so that the relative velocity can be written as the ratio of relative displacement. Relative displacement to the time taken. So this is just the representation of relative velocity. But there is a lot to understand in this relative velocity, my dear students. First, we should know how to represent the relative velocity first. Assume that we have two different objects. Let us say A and B. A object is moving with some velocity. Let's say it has VA and the object B is also moving with some velocity. Let us say it has V. Right? So I'm just I'm repeating again. There are two objects. There are two objects. Whereas one object is moving with the velocity V A and another one object is moving with the velocity V B. Then how to write the relative velocity? My dear students, there are two concepts here. The relative velocity, the relative velocity of object A with respect to object B it means we are comparing we are comparing the velocity of an object A with respect to the velocity of object B. So how to write that in a formula? How to write that in a formula? So as I said you before, that the relative velocity of A with respect to B equals I am comparing the velocity of A with, respect, with the velocity of B. So this can be written as VA. B. This is represented as V 
A, B. Similarly, suppose if I want to write the relative velocity, relative velocity of object B with respect to object A. The relative velocity is represented by B, B, A. So, this is a representation of relative velocity. Because we have two objects, say it as A and B, I am comparing the velocity of A with respect to the velocity of B. Then the relative velocity is represented as B, A, B. Similarly, here the relative velocity of object B, I am comparing this velocity with the velocity of A. It is written as B, B, A. So, just to represent it here, that's it. Then, how to write this B, A, B as well as how to write this B, B, A. There comes again two questions. I am repeating again my dear students. I am repeating again my dear students. So, the relative velocity of A with respect to B is represented as B, A, B. And the relative velocity of B with respect to A is written as B, B, A. If I want to write exactly the formula for BAB, again there comes two conditions. It means whether the A and B are moving in the same direction or whether the A and B are moving in the opposite direction. Let us see that. So, hope you got this here formula. This relative velocity is equal to relative displacement by time taken. Now, there are two conditions. The first condition is this. Yes. The first condition you can observe that. The first condition is both the objects are moving in the same direction. Consider that the first condition is both the objects are moving in the same direction. Both the objects are moving in Okay, right. Now, I have the two objects, say A and let us say another one object, let us say it as B. See, both are moving in the same direction, whereas the velocity of an object A is BA and the velocity of an object B is taken as B. My dear students, here you can also very carefully that both objects are in the same direction. My first question is that the relative velocity of A with respect to B. How to write the relative velocity of A with respect to B? Right. Relative velocity of A with respect to B. I already shown you that it is written as V A B. Then if both the objects are moving in the same direction, relative velocity is represented as VA minus VB. My dear students, similarly, how to write the relative velocity of B with respect to A when both the objects are moving in the same direction? It is written as VBA. So this is represented by VB minus VA. Hope you got it. A with respect to B can be represented as BAB. B with respect to A can be represented as BBA. How to write the expression? So this expression can be written by taking two considerations. One is with when both the objects are moving in same direction. Suppose if I consider that the both objects are moving in opposite direction. The second condition I am going to consider here. When one object is moving opposite to other. One object is moving opposite to other. So what happens now? I am again considering the two objects. Let us say A which is moving in one direction and whereas let us consider the object B which is moving in the opposite direction to the object A. The initial velocity is VA for this object A and the initial velocity for the object B acquired is equal to B. See my dear students, here we have the two objects say A and B. Both are moving in 
opposite direction. See, for this reason, if I just consider that, if I just consider that, if VA is in the forward direction, then this is moving in an opposite direction, right? You know that, you know that, velocity is a vector quantity, vector quantity is depending upon direction. In the last class, I said you that in the introduction class, I said you that the displacement is a 1, it is a vector quantity, it may be 0, it may be positive, it may be negative. Similarly, this velocity is also a vector quantity. It is positive when it is moving in a positive x direction and it becomes negative when it is moving in an opposite to the x direction and as well as, as well as, it sometimes it may become equal to zero. This object B is moving opposite to VA so that VB can be written as minus VB by applying the vector condition because it is moving in an opposite direction so that it is taken as minus VB. Dear students, now let us write the relative velocity. Now let us write the relative velocity of A with respect to B. Right? How to write this one? V A B. Right? This is a representation. Then how to write the equation? You know already. It is written as V A minus V B. Right? But here V B is equal to minus V B. So what happens now? V A minus of minus V B. I just substituted the value of V B is equal to minus V B. Then the final equation V A B turns out to be equal to V A into minus into minus becomes plus V B. See, simply keep in your mind that the relative velocity of object A with respect to the object B when both are moving in an opposite direction, then VAB can be written as VA plus VB. Similarly, relative velocity of object B with respect to object A. Relative velocity of object B with respect to object A. How to represent it? It is represented by as VBA. And you already you know that it is written as VB minus VA. VB minus VA. My dear students, you are again, you are again, you can observe carefully that if I am just comparing VB with A, it means VB is positive now and VA becomes equal to minus VA. Because I am comparing the velocity of B with A. So, this B is moving in one direction, but whereas this A is opposite to B, so that it is written as negative. Now, you can observe B, B A becomes equal to B B minus of in place of B A, I am substituting it as minus B A. So, minus B A. B B A is equal to B B minus into minus becomes plus B. So that V B A can be written as V B plus B A. My dear students, relative velocity of B with respect to A when both the objects are moving in opposite direction. So that V B A can be written as V B plus B A. Hope you got clear on the uh, uh, writing of the formula for the relative velocity when both the objects are moving in same direction and both the objects are moving in opposite direction. So this is for the objects which are in the same direction and this is for the equations for the objects which are in opposite direction. This is regarding how to represent the relative velocity formula for the objects which are moving in the same direction and also in opposite direction. Now let us move for the derivation of the formula for relative velocity. Now my topic is I just want to derive the expression for relative velocity. Derivation of equation for relative velocity. Now let us derive this. 
for this derivation so again we have the word that is said to be the relative velocity it means here again i want to consider two different objects i am going to consider the two different objects let us say object a and object b right yes there are two different objects let us say object a and object b both are moving in the same batch assume that the derivation of equation for relative velocity in that bracket the condition is both or moving in same direction both are moving in same direction yes both are moving in same direction now this is an object a this is object b i'm just want to, i just want to represent both are moving in same direction right so this is also moving in the same direction as the b is moving as the b is moving both are moving in the same direction now my dear students the velocity for object a is b a and the velocity for object b is v b my dear students there is a condition that the velocity of an object a is greater than the velocity of object b this is a condition object a is moving with more velocity compared to of object b but the initial velocity is v a for a and the vb is the velocity for b these students dear students when the time t is equal to 0 when the time t is equal to 0 the objects are moving with some velocity after time t after time t so you can observe that you can observe that the object a has displaced from one position to another position so the displacement made by the object a is taken as x a and there is a condition already that object a is moving faster than object b there is already a condition that object a is moving faster than object b then what happens by the time so that when the time is t the object b is at this position object b is at this position then the distance covered by the distance covered by the b when it travels from time t is equal to 0 to time t is equal to t the distance is taken as the distance is taken as x b x b is the distance covered x b is the distance covered then what is the remaining distance the remaining distance is taken as x a minus x b the remaining distance is taken as x a minus x b right okay as i said my dear students that the velocity for the object a and object b is v a and v b respectively at time t is equal to 0 when the time is equal to t the object a comes to this position and again it is because moving at some velocity and when here the object b is at this position it is again moving with some velocity v b right so my dear students keep in your mind that the v a is greater than v b it means that v a is moving very 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 faster compared to that of b so that it will reach a larger distance it covered a larger distance compared to that of this b so that this remaining distance is taken as x a minus x b this remaining distance is taken as x a minus x b so what this this represents now see when the time t is equal to 0 a and b are in the same position when time t is equal to 0 a and b are in the same position but when time t is equal to b due to the reason v a is greater than v b a is moving faster than b so actually b is moving very very but uh, very on lesser speed so that near the b actually lagging beyond its speed compared to that of a so it means there is a relative displacement between these two objects see that position of object a is here 
the position of object B is here when the time is t. But when the time is zero, both are in the same position. This exactly indicates, my dear students, there is a difference in the covering of the distances or the displacement by the object A and object B. But both are going in the same direction. But velocities are different. That's why, that's why here we can observe exactly that there is a relative displacement comes into existence. The relative, exist relative displacement comes into existence. That is what the difference in the displacement between the object A and object B that is said to be xA minus xB. And now let us move on for the derivation. Hope you got the diagram. So now I am just writing the uh, formula for that. You know that the velocity can be written as displacement divided by time taken. Velocity can be written as displacement divided by time taken. Right? Now velocity v can be represented by v itself and the displacement can be written as x and time is taken as t. Now I want to write the velocity for object A. Velocity for object A can be written as V A, right? And the displacement covered by the A is X A. So now it is written as X A divided by T. It is time T. Similarly, take this equation as 1. And this cross multiplying here. Cross multiply. What happens now? X A becomes equal to V A A B. Take it as equation number 2. See, I just put out the formula for the velocity for object A. Similarly, I am going to write the velocity for object B. So, what is the velocity formula? V B can be written as. See, in time t, how much is the distance covered by the object B? In a time t, the distance covered by the object is said to be xb. So, I am writing the same xb divided by t. Again, cross multiplication. So, xb can be written as vb into t. Take it as equation number 3 and this one as equation number 4. Right? I want to write the relative displacement. Why? I want to get the relative velocity. You know that the relative velocity can be written as relative displacement divided by time. How to write the relative displacement? Just by subtracting B from A. So that the relative displacement, I am writing the relative displacement here. So that the relative displacement, the relative displacement can be written as xA minus xB. Here we have xA and also xB. Write it. So xA minus xB is said to be the relative displacement. And my dear students, what is this xA? You can observe here xA minus xB. So I am just writing here the relative displacement. So the relative displacement relative displacement as equal to xA minus x, right? What is xA? Observe here from equation 2, xA is BA into T minus xB is BB into T. I am substituting equation 2, that is the value of xA is equal to BA into T here. And similarly, I am substituting the value of xB, which is equal to BB into T here. So that becomes BB into T, right? Now, so here BA minus BB, common term is T. Common term is T, so I am going to take it outside. And the same thing I got, let me set to be the relative displacement. Right, this is set to be the relative displacement. But I want to calculate the formula for relative velocity. Already I have defined with that. The relative velocity is given as relative displacement by time taken. So I am writing here. So that I am just dividing the equation, above equation, by t on both the sides. See, I am just dividing this by time set to be t. And here again, Va minus Vb into t divided by t. I just divided the above equation. 
on both the sides by the time taken. So relative displacement by the time taken is said to be the relative velocity. Is said to be the relative velocity from the definition I written as. I denote that from the definition it is written as a relative velocity. It is equal to T T cancel with each other. Remaining is V A minus V. Then how to write the relative velocity? It is written as V A B, which is equal to V A minus V B. This is the relative velocity of A with respect to B. Suppose if I want to the relative, I want to write the relative velocity of B with respect to A. It can be written as V B A, which is equal to V B minus V A. Hope you got. This is the derivation. For the relative velocity, this is the derivation for relative velocity. So one thing you should keep in your mind: when time t is equal to this zero, both the objects are in the same position and they are moving with the velocity v a and v b. So due to the condition that the velocity of a is greater than the velocity of v b, so that a is moving faster compared with that of b. Due to this reason, when the time T when the when the time which is T the displacement covered by A is more compared to that of the displacement covered by B. So X is the displacement made by A in the time T and X B is the displacement made by the object B in the time T. Then what is the relative or the difference in the displacement covered by object A and B? That is written as x a minus x b taken as relative displacement. That is x a minus x b. Finally, with the expert with the definition and uh, with the help of the velocity, we just derive it. So, the relative velocity of a with respect to b and also the relative velocity of b with respect to a, which can be written as v a minus v b. This is all about the derivation related to the relative velocity of an object. Of both the objects which are moving in same direction, there are still different graphs so that even you can, even you can just explain how actually the velocity of one object varies with the velocity of another object. So I am just going to draw the three graphs, my dear students. Observe the graph carefully and try to <coughs> differentiate and also try to. Compare the velocity of one object with respect to the velocity of another object. I'm writing. I'm comparing the three cases. I'm going to consider first case. This case is also related to the relative velocity along x-axis. I'm going to consider time, whereas this is origin. And along y-axis, I'm going to consider the velocity. Here again, I am going to write the case 2. So that in case 2, the same thing I am going to write the graph below. There are x-axis and also the y-axis. Along x-axis is time and along y-axis the velocity. Similarly, I am moving towards the case 3. In the case 3, again I am going to write the graph here. Along x-axis, time. And along y-axis, I am going to consider the velocity. Right. Yes, you can observe it carefully here. Now, object A is moving and object B is moving in the same direction. Right? Now, this is for object A and this is for object B. Yes, students, you can observe carefully that. You can observe carefully that. Both the objects are moving here. Both the objects are moving. V A object A is moving with some velocity, say V A, and the object B is moving with some velocity, V B. So the normal method compare one is compare of the words. And let us write other two graphs. This is for object A and this is for object B. Whereas object A is moving with some velocity, say V A. Our object B is moving with some velocity, say B. And in the case 3, object B and object B. Object B is here, object B is here. 
my dear students here the velocity of object a is b a and the velocity of object b is b a see just now written the three graphs three cases i consider in the three cases along x axis i consider the time and along y axis i consider the velocity in the array there are three different graphs whereas three graphs are entirely different so you can observe that your both the both the objects are moving with the velocity v a and v b respectively then how to compare so by seeing the graph we should compare by seeing the graph we should exactly compare how the velocity is going to change so that we should know that whether the velocity of a is greater than the velocity of b or the velocity of b is greater than the velocity of a and also we should know that how actually this velocity of a and b or equal or the velocity of a and b or not equal to each other so for that reason i consider the three cases in this three case the first graph exactly you can observe that the object b and also the object a both are moving here right so whereas both are moving so in this condition you can observe exactly Okay, so I just written here the graph. Sorry, dear students, this is not velocity. This is displacement. This is displacement that is said to be s or x. So now in this displacement, along the x-axis I consider the time taken, and along y-axis I just consider the displacement. Sorry, you can't use with the velocity. Why? Because I want to calculate the velocity, right? So to calculate the velocity, I should consider the position time graph. So the position or the distance, the displacement is taken along y-axis. And the time is considered along x-axis. Now, my dear students, you can observe here both the graphs, both curve for object A and the curve for object B, both are parallel to each other. And whereas you can observe that the displacement of B is here and the displacement of A is here, but both are straight line. It means uniform motion. As well as here, you can observe carefully that for exactly the same interval. For the time, for this time, a and b are covering the equal intervals of distances. They are covering equal intervals of distances. It means they are going to cover equal distances in equal intervals of time. So that what happens to the velocity now? The velocity remains constant. Velocity is same for object a and object b. So that the curve for object a is parallel to object b. So that the velocity of a becomes equal to Velocity of b, and you can observe that here in this case, the object a is moving faster compared to that of object b, so that the velocity of a is greater than velocity of b. And in this case, you can observe that of this b is just overtaking a, it means it's crossing a at some time t, at some time, at some time the object b is going to cross or to overtake. The object A will take one by that, so that the velocity of object B is greater than the velocity of object A. So these are the three cases. These three cases are exactly explained just by considering the position time graph. Position or the displacement or the distance is along the y-axis and the time is along x-axis. In this first case, you can observe that object B is moving beyond object A. Here also, object B is moving beyond object A. But here, the object B is going to overtake after time t. The object B is going to overtake the object A after time t. So these are the differences that how we are going to compare the velocity of one object with respect to the velocity of another object just by using the graphical representation, just by using the position time graph. So we do confuse with the velocity time graph. We are we are using displacement, not velocity. It is said to be the displacement time graph. Now, my dear students, let us see all what happens to the kinematic equations of motion. So, one, the object is moving upward, and the object is moving downward. Assume that the object is falling downwards. Object is falling downwards. Downward direction. Right. And similarly, I want to write. The object is thrown upwards. It means if you are just standing on the top of the tower and you are just uh, allowing the object to fall under the action of gravity, by the time acceleration becomes equal to plus g. Suppose if you are just going to throw the object, 
like this if you are going to throw the object above the ground it means the acceleration it means the, actually the earth is going to attract the object but we are throwing the object opposite to the direction of the earth that is towards the opposite to the attractive force of the earth so that the acceleration becomes equal to minus g it is written as minus g now what happens to three equation of motion let us observe I am writing three equations of motion in this way V is equal to U plus AT S is equal to UT plus of AT square and the last one is V square minus V square is, is equal to 2AS and the displacement S becomes equal to S H and here also the displacement S becomes equal to H let us see first V is equal to U plus GT here S becomes H right H is equal to UT plus of A in place of A I want to write G so that of GT square and here you can observe that V square minus V square is equal to 2 GH in place of A I just written G and in place of S I written H now in this case let us see when the object is thrown on it U is equal to V is equal to U plus A T in place of A I want to write the minus T so minus G T similarly S in place of S I am writing H is equal to U T plus of A T square but in place of A I want to substitute minus T so minus of G T square and the last one is V square minus U square is equal to 2 A S but here S is replaced by H and A is replaced by minus G. So it is equal to minus 2GH. This is how to represent the kinematic equations of motion for an object which is moving downward direction and which is moving towards upward direction. So these two are the formulas keep in your mind for downward direction. A is equal to plus G and for the upward direction A becomes equal to minus G. The last thing my dear students, even you can write the equation that is what S is equal to UT plus of AT square and also there is another one equation V square minus U square is equal to 2AS. Whereas here we have the displacement that is said to be S. Even you can write X as a displacement here. Even you can write H for vertical motion. Even you can write y for the displacement. Now, suppose if an object is, is at a position x0 when the time is equal to 0. Assume that when the time t is equal to 0, the object is under rest. Suppose if the object is not under rest, but it is moving. When the rest is like to under, a position of 0 to the one to be. Suppose if it is moving, so that atava, suppose the time t is equal to 0 and the time will have a position how to represent the position of an object at time t is equal to 0 is represented as x0 and at the time t the position is represented as x. Right. Then how to write this one? How to write this x0? So this can be written as, this equation can be written as x minus x0 is equal to ut plus of at square. Why? Because assume that the object is moving from a position, let us say x0 so at time t is equal to 0 to time t is equal to t so that the total displacement made by the object is x. So what is the total displacement here? It can be written as x minus x0. Right. So here x minus x0 can be written as ut plus of at square. Similarly, this equation can be written as v square minus u square is equal to 2a into x minus x0. 2a x minus x0. This is how to write. Suppose the position origin algebra, starting position origin algebra, and the time only we can use these two equations. Suppose the initial position is not the origin. If it is origin, so that x0 can be taken as 0. If the position is not equal to origin by the time, we should use these two formulas. That is x minus x1. Okay,
the this year this completes your uh, chapter that is motion in a straight line my dear students hope you got each and every point very clearly that what we discussed in the class we just discussed the distance displacement comparison between distance and the displacement as well as there is a unit and acceleration speed velocity and the different types of velocity and different types of acceleration and also we just did use the expression for kinematic equations of motion and we observed the velocity time graph and finally the relative velocity and how to represent the value of g in case of an object when it is moving in an upward direction as well as when it is moving in a downward direction this is all the things which comes in this chapter hope you got clearly regarding this and for your days of work my dear students when you come back to school for the correction by the time i am going to check it out so for your homework just go for the derivation of the relative velocity and also just go for the derivation of equations of motion that is go for the derivation of three equations of motion and go for the derivation of relative velocity with the graphs that is said to be the position factor especially discussed three cases right so that three cases you should have thank you